Hey there everyone, my name is Chantel, and welcome to this All Deck Active HDL video where I'll be demonstrating the Test Bench wizard. This wizard uses a test vector file and automatically generates the necessary test bench files based on the user's options. Test benching is a crucial step in design verification, so having a tool like this can make this step easier and more efficient to do. For this demonstration, I'll be using the loadable counter example design that you can find by going to the help tab, clicking on open example, and it'll be under VHDL designs. As you can see, this is just a basic 4-bit loadable synchronous counter. And if you've opened up the design, there's already a waves-based test bench folder, but I've detached it from mine so I can demonstrate the test bench wizard generating the same files. So now the first thing is to make sure that the counter is compiled so that the entity or module is selectable in the wizard. Now head over to the Tools tab and select Generate Test Bench to open up the Test Bench wizard. So now the wizard is opened, and from here you can create a test bench of two types. One is a single process or simple test bench where the stimulus is produced by a process with a hard-coded sequence of signal assignments. By using an ASDB, VHS, or VER file, the assignments are inserted into the test bench source code. The second case is the waves-based test bench, where the stimulus is produced by a concurrent procedure that reads a test vector file and drives the unit under test input ports using a VEC file, or ASDB waveform file. With waves based, you can compare the output generated by the test bench versus the outputs saved in the test vector file. So I'm going to first start with generating a single process test bench using the counter entity. I will select the test vectors from file option to use the ASDB waveform file that was already included in this example design. If a test vector isn't selected, the test bench files will be generated, but you will have to manually add stimulus into the generated test bench file. So now I'll click on Browse and select the functional ASDB file. You'll see that the wizard was able to find the same signals in the file compared to the UUT ports. Now I'll click on Next, and here you could specify the names of the test bench entity, architecture, source file, and folder for the files. Clicking next again will take us to the final page of the wizard showing what files will be generated. And here you can also specify if you want to generate a timing simulation file. I'll click on finish to finally generate our simple process test bench files. And now if you look at the design browser, a new folder with the name I gave it in the wizard is now attached to the design. Inside of it are the test bench and the macro to run the test bench. Had I clicked on the generate option in the wizard, there would have also been a test bench generated for a timing simulation. In the test bench file, you can see that the stimuli process has been auto-generated. And the macro compiles the two necessary files, initializes simulation, adds a waveform view, and finally runs the simulation. Now that we've seen what's generated, let's go ahead and run the macro. And here's the resulting waveform of the test bench. With the stimuli generated in the test bench for the inputs, the simulation shows Q's behavior after rest goes low and when low is high. We can see that Q is behaving as expected for being a loadable counter. So that was the simple process test bench generated from the test bench wizard. Now we'll move on to the second test bench option known as waves based. Select the waves based option, go next, and now we'll define the test vectors using the VEC file included in this example design by clicking on browse and making sure that the file type is the VEC stimulus file. This will be in the Waves folder. Select that and click on Open. All the same signals have been found in the file, and now we can click on Next. 
In the naming options, I'm just going to change the name of the folder to waves underscore generated, since this example design already includes one generated waves folder. Now when we click on next, we can see the files that will be generated, and this test bench type also offers the same option to generate configuration for timing simulation. We'll leave that alone again, and now I'll click finish. Now we have our Waves-based test bench generator files located in this newly added Waves generated folder. As you can see, Waves generates a lot more files than a simple process test bench does. Here's all the files that the wizard generated. The pins file is a package with the declaration of an enumerated type whose values are the UUT pin names. The declaration file is another package with additional declaration needed for the test bench, and this is referenced in the main test bench code. This also uses the pins file. Next, we have a header file with some information about the test bench generation and dataset construction. After this is an objects file, which is an external source file with a package containing basic declarations and definitions required by Waves-based test benches. There's this monitor utilities file, which provides support for the UUT output checking. There's also another external source file called Waves Generator that contains the definitions of the procedures producing the pattern test vectors. Then you could see the VEC file that we used to generate the files. And now we have our main test bench source code and the macro file that sources, compiles, and simulates this waves-based test bench. Again, if I had generated it earlier, this folder would also include the timing simulation configuration file. So now that we know all the files that were generated, let's go ahead and run the macro. And here's the waveform results. We can see that the waves-based waveform is definitely different from the simple process. It defines the inputs as stimulus, and there's outputs for the expected cue versus the actual cue. We also have a WPL and error status signal. And as we can see in the console and visually in the waveform, it is confirmed that all the test vectors have passed, meaning that the design is outputting the expected values. And with that concludes this video on ActiveHDL's test bench wizard. This easy to follow step-by-step -step wizard expedites the test bench creation process while also leaving room for more thorough verification, especially for a waves-based test bench. Whether it's for individual design components or for the whole system, this wizard will provide all the necessary files and stimuli for your test bench, saving you time for more verification. Thanks for watching.